the world we live in, and these become kind of like phrases we use all the time, is a world uh, that uh, is always challenging people and people feel chronic stress. And we use another word, we call it resilience, which we really, in, we're inferring that there are people who are vulnerable to stress and others that are not. And so the question is, uh, the adaptive question is, given the fact that the world is a stressful world, or how do we build up a resilience? How do we build the, the resources to deal with it? And there are two dimensions or two strategies I would like to go or discuss on this. The first, I really talked about neural exercises and how they then can help individuals uh, provide more uh, re more activity or more resource. So we go through neural exercise and we talked a lot. We'll talk about uh, co-regulation and connectedness and how interacting with people or even playing team sports builds a re reciprocity in which our physiology is not merely self-regulated, but co-regulated with another. The other one is self-resources. And I start to think more about this um, in terms of uh, how one would develop treatment models for trauma, for addiction and others, because most of the disorders that people suffer are really disorders of state regulation. We can translate that and say they're disorders of stress regulation or emotional regulation. It's all the same underlying mechanisms. So I would say that there are certain resources we give people, and that was so we can give them how, uh, lessons on how to breathe, because breathing is a powerful uh, portal to regulate physiological state and to downregulate uh, sympathetic mobilization strategies, calm us down. Uh, we can also use mental images. So with breathing, it's it's a top bottom up and top down working together. But with mental images, we start thinking about the positive moments of our lives. And when we start taking those visual uh, images into our mind's memory, they have a they have a physiological correlate. They start shifting our physiological state and they downregulate our defenses. So there are these two pathways. One is we get our nervous system working through exercises of interacting with others. And then we also make sure that individuals realize that under very, very bad situations or challenging, I shouldn't even use the word bad, but challenging situations, they have a resource they can go to. They can go to their memories, they can go to their breath, but they can really use their knowledge and say that when I'm really challenged, maybe I need to move my body into a environment that is less sensory challenging so that it can now co it can now regulate even though we're not talking about co-regulation so in in behavior modification world they used to talk about timeout rooms but what those timeout rooms were cues of isolation and isolation is one of the worst triggers most profound and potent triggers to a mammal isolation whether it's a metaphor or physically done is really powerful in terms of disrupting who we are because we've taken away the capacity and the opportunity to co-regulate. But if we're self-regulating, there are times where we don't want to be around people too much for us. We don't want to be around noise too much for us. So we don't want even like activity going on. So we, we, we need quiet places and personal spaces. So we have these two, uh, uh, pathways. One is we develop a more resilient nervous system. We develop an awareness of that nervous system. And when we develop an awareness of what's going on in our body, we develop a strategy to be aware when we're hitting our limits.